All right. Uh, welcome, welcome to our talk. We are presenting today about how to speed up your Drupal code base using uh, a code profiling tool called Blackfire.io. Uh, my name is Alex Zergachev and this is my colleague Jigar Mehta. He, he and I are working at Evolving Web out in Montreal. Uh, yeah. Good. <laughs> it's there, it's there, it's just a little chilly. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, happy, we're happy you're here and uh, we hope, hope you learned something. So just a little bit about, about the, the two speakers here. I, I'm the co-founder of, uh, of Evolving Web. I'm less and less technical these days. 10 years ago, I was like the, the back-end developer and, and now my wife, Suzanne, is the front-end developer. Uh, but now we, we do a lot more. So my partner, my wife, Suzanne, is the partner and she does training. And, uh, and I guess I do a little bit of everything these days. Um, and um, we've been doing Drupal since, since basically the start. Uh, I'm Jigar, people also call me Jerry. I'm from India and I've been working on PHP since like 2008 and on Drupal like for about three years, in 2012 or 13 I started and it's been a nice ride working with Drupal and this Blackfire thing is really awesome. I hope you like it. Great, yeah, and uh, Jigar joined Evolving Web about a year ago. Um, so our company has been doing consulting and web development since 2007. We're based out of Montreal. We got some uh, Montreal bagels uh, at, our, at our booth on the other side of that wall. Come, come by and chat with us. Uh, and we've been doing Drupal pretty much for nine of those ten years. And we do a lot of content migration, design, theming, all, all, all the stuff. A lot of, a lot of enterprise-y kind of projects with uh, you know, integrations with legacy systems and data synchronization. Uh, so scalability concerns and infrastructure as well. A lot of multilingual, so a lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, here's some some clients we've worked with over the years. I think these are out of date screenshots anyway. Yeah, and uh, here here's what we're going to talk about today. So you guys are here because you have a Drupal website. Who here is involved with with Drupal websites in some way? Okay, good. You're in the right place. Uh, whose website could be faster? Or do you have any website that you'd like to be faster? Okay, great. So we're going to talk about what that means, what, what, what faster specifically means. Uh, we're going to talk about what a profiler is, uh, why Blackfire is a good one. Uh, we'll segue into like, doing a demo of Blackfire uh, and uh, what, what it can do. And then we'll, we'll discuss a couple of case studies because it turns out using a profiler and doing these optimizations is kind of like an art and, and so examples are the way to go. Uh, so for the motivation section, um, I, uh, I think, I think we, we all know that user experience is, 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 is really tied to how fast a web page loads. Um, we, we also know that uh, how fast a web page loads affects your level of concurrency you can do, so how many users can actually visit it at the same time given the same hardware. And in, in web, web development and infrastructure, everyone always says developers are expensive, hardware is cheap, just, just throw more hardware at it. But it turns out for, for most of us here, we're probably living most of the time in a single server environment. And if we are, uh, it's a lot cheaper to stay in a single server environment in terms of developer time. So, so obviously, get a really beefy server. That's what we do with like 128 gigs of RAM and, and SSD drives. Uh, but at some point, before you go to crazy multi-server environment, see if you can have really good caching and really good performance before you have to go to a much more complex setup. So that saves you a lot of money. Um, and uh, yeah, so everyone knows very well that page loading time is correlated with like SEO and, and user behavior and how, how much conversions you have in your e-commerce site and so on. Uh, and then I have an anecdote that I'd like to tell from Google's history. Uh, you guys know that Google became famous because they came up with this page rank algorithm, right? Uh, that allowed every web page to rank each other by links, like it's a vote for the quality of another web page. So they asked the web, show me who you think your important other pages are and I'll rank it up. Well, it turns out that idea was not patented by Google. It wasn't new. Uh, what Larry and Sergey came up with, with was an algorithm that was uh, probabilistic to crawl this giant graph that you couldn't really crawl. And, and instead of doing an exact calculation of what web pages or how they rank each other, they did an approximate uh, calculation. So metaphorically speaking, they did a performance optimization. And they were the, the only guys who could do it fast and, and almost in real time. So that's why they became huge. So it uh, turns out performance uh, is, is pretty important and premature optimization is not necessarily the root of all evil, to, to paraphrase a famous computer scientist. Um, so we're discussing code profiling. 
which is kind of the back end profiling. It's kind of like your Drupal site needs to generate some HTML. So what this doesn't talk about and what this session isn't about is browser rendering time. So the time to actually like download the HTML and download the CSS, download the JavaScript, and then render all that visually and, and do all the stuff. Um, and any bandwidth issues you might have. Uh, JavaScript can be quite slow because it's its own interpreter that's running inside of your browser. So if you have too many JavaScript libraries or they're doing complex things, that can really slow things down. And of course, if you have heavy assets like images and fonts as well. Um, in our experience, the majority of uh, website performance problems that are user visible are actually on the front end. So uh, maybe start with the, with the front end and, and, and see if there's any low hanging fruits like five megabyte uh, JPEG files on your home page. Who, 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 who's, who's done that? Yeah, I've done that, okay. So, but this, this session is, is about code profiling. It's about why is my Drupal site sluggish? So it's kind of like taking this code base that you downloaded from Drupal.org with a bunch of core and contrib modules, maybe some of your own, and saying which part of this that's running is slow in generating a specific request. So it's kind of taking like an x-ray of your little Drupal code base. Um, so what it actually does measure on a typical, for a typical request is how much time was spent for that request per function. We'll see that in a second. Uh, and how much, how much resource it was using in terms of CPU, memory, database queries, uh, network, web service calls, and uh, NIO, which, which typically means network or, or hard drive access. Um, and what this, these tools do, these profiling tools do, they, is they hook into the PHP interpreter, the, the PHP engine, and, uh, and they do something called instrumentation, which is basically at the be beginning of every function call, it makes a little timer. This function, it makes a log. This function got called at this, with this many like milliseconds after 1970, and then that many at the end of it, and then it and gives you a report. So that's what we'll be looking at today. Um, so why, why, so we're still in the motivation section, so why is it specifically important for Drupal? Uh, well, it's, since you're mostly Drupal developers, right, I'm not gonna hide the truth from you guys. Uh, Drupal as a, as, a, as a web framework is not the most lightweight thing out there. I mean, you can write something custom in PHP that runs three database queries and, and renders a web page. Uh, or you can hard code everything using static site generator. But uh, a, a Drupal as a framework is very flexible and it's very powerful, but that all comes at the, at the expense of being potentially heavy depending on what you do with it. Um, we find that Drupal core itself is quite optimized. I mean, it's certainly not super lightweight, lightweight, but it's reasonable and it's, it's, it's had a lot of eyeballs to make sure that there's no major problems. Uh, but contrib modules, you know, depending if you only have the most commonly used ones, chances are somebody's already made sure that they're optimal. But if, if, uh, if a site builder downloads and en enables and configures 35 contrib modules, chances are five of them are going to be a little bit more on the experimental side and they will be really affecting your performance. Um, so, and the same thing with legacy code. I mean, if you inherit code from another developer, which happens in real life all the time, uh, who's to say he didn't just take a shortcut last time he was developing something and move on. Um, the other thing to consider is uh, uh, page caching. So Varnish is, is a well-known page cache tool that a lot of people are using. Uh, and what it does is uh, it, it takes a snapshot of, of a given URL. It sits between the browser and, and Drupal. And so if, if a, an, a user comes back and asks for the same page, a different user, they'll just serve it from the cache. So page cache is great, but it's not enough. Uh, it's, it's not enough because if you have logged in users, that's no good. Like typically the standard setup for Varnish is that it just up, skips all, skips caching any authenticated requests. And also uh, if you have anything like e-commerce or anything with cookies, the moment you add something to a cart, that sets a cookie. So it's effectively like being a logged in user. So there's lots of scenarios where or Varnish will not save your butt if you have an inefficient site Maybe not every request, but maybe just five percent of them will be really slow, and you know, at really high s levels of, of traffic, that will bring down your server. Or when you clear the caches, or when the caches expire uh, once in a while from a timeout. So, uh, so that's uh, that's one factor. Another factor is as developers, there's a selfish motivation here. Whenever we work on a on a site, on a Drupal site, it's uh, we don't have page cache turned on because we're changing the configuration and, and the code all the time. And working on a slow Drupal site is really painful. Like I. Like, I would quit my job if I had to constantly work on some giant, slow website. So that's why this tool is great. Um, from a business perspective or from a motivation perspective, here's 
five random projects we, uh, we ran this Blackfire tool on and, uh, and what we saw. So for, for, McGill, for McGill University web, website, uh, just looking at a profile, pretty much right away we were able to spot a 10% improvement. So it, it took less than an hour to spot the improvement and, and it was a two line code in fixing it. We'll see it later today. Uh, for a client uh, who I cannot mention for a non-disclosure reason, um, for, for a specific client, they, they, their homepage took six hours, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, their homepage took like a second and a half to load in production at high volume traffic. Uh, and uh, with, it was quite complex, but with a couple hours of work, a day of work, we were able to cut that down half of it and with another day of work, another by half again. Uh, for our own evolving website, when we moved to Drupal 8, for some reason, it became a lot slower in, in D8 than D7. We didn't know why, but using Blackfire, we were able to do, do some investigation. Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. And, uh, and cut off 20%. Uh, and uh, for another project, uh, for Linux Foundation, uh, we had a view that pretty quickly we realized this view is configured with revisions, and revisions aren't cached, and, and using this tool, we were able to spot that, uh, and so on. Oh. Uh, the funniest one is at the end when we have a 92% improvement in page loading time. I think it had to do with uh, the sitemap mod module being misconfigured or something. And FAQ. Oh, the FAQ module, yeah, I, I forgot. And, uh, and so just basically adding a filter per content type or something was just a, a single configuration setting. Fixed it. So, yeah, please, please opt. And this was in production for a year before we came along. That was a project we took over. So please, please optimize, please check if you have a slow page. Sometimes it's really easy. So, so I came up with a methodology for, uh, for profiling. And of course, every methodology needs a catchy acronym. So we got M-A-F-I-A. -A. Uh, all right, M. Um, so M is for measure. So you've gotta, you gotta figure out what exactly is slow and what exactly is fast. What exactly is the page that you're trying to profile. When a client calls us and says, my website's slow, believe it or not, that's not very helpful if there's any clients in the room. We wanna know, what do you mean? Which page is slow? Are you logged in or are you not? Is the site slow in development with only one user, you? Is the site slow in production when you have 10,000 people hitting it in the same day? Um, so so that's, that's first. And then second of all, you, know, you have to figure out what the URL is, if there's any cookies involved. Um, then you have to, when you're doing this measurement in your head, you have to keep in mind what's the URL, like what's, what specific pages are slow and which ones are faster. You have to compare uh, development to production because maybe you have different hardware and different co server contention uh, and and you also have to keep in mind with Drupal one of one of the things we like to we like to do is we like to disable some modules that right away just like are these modules the culprits so we always vary things up when we, we do this analysis and of course uh, part of measuring is using the profiler like Blackfire as we'll do in a sec um, once you're looking at a profile uh, you're gonna look for low-hanging fruit things like that you consider almost bottlenecks. Fix this little thing, and all of a sudden, your web page loads three times as fast. In, in real life experience, we find that that happens quite a bit. So instead of trying to make micro optimizations everywhere, just on your first pass, look for the, for the slowest page on your site, and then look for the thing that's making that slow. Maybe, maybe you will find it fast. Typically, the way we, uh, what we look for are things that, that are like an expensive calculation that might be able to be cached. Uh, some too many SQL queries or a, a, an SQL query that's too slow, uh, a web request, like a web service that's blocking and, and as a result it's not loading right, or unnecessary node loads or entity loads. Um, so this is the typical Drupal bottlenecks that we, we look for. Uh, another, another thing to keep in mind is sometimes you look at, at, at this report that we'll see in a second and uh, you see overall sluggishness. Everything's slower than it should be, but no specific thing stands out. There is no bottleneck, my site's just slow. Sometimes you have to like put your thinking hat on and say, what, what might be going on? Is this a heavy site? Is this a slow server? Or maybe there's something going on, like swapping. Like, like maybe I'm running out of RAM, and as a result, it just everything feels slow. Or maybe I'm in development, and I'm running Vagrant with VirtualBox, and I'm using VirtualBox shared folders, which is a way to have your host and your, and your guest VM share the same folder and synchronize. That really slows Drupal down. You, you might actually see this once you start. Uh, development and, and that could be the explanation. So it's not your code. Um, another thing could be server contention if there's like unshared hosting and there's other people using the same servers, or if you don't install opcache. Um, okay, so next thing in Mafia is fix. So you're gonna make an actual change. That means you're actually gonna change some code or some infrastructure. Like you're literally gonna make a tweak. 
Uh, and then it's very important to compare to the baseline. Uh, keep in mind that sometimes if you, if you, in Drupal, if you remove something that's not necessary at the start of the request and you're happy because it saves time at the start of the request, maybe, maybe later on in the middle of the request when we're rendering, I don't know, the, the main body as opposed to the header, maybe in the middle of the request we needed the same node being loaded. So just because you're not loading that node anymore now, loading that node anymore now, uh, you'll still need it later. So you haven't saved globally. So you have to compare. You have to do a profile before and after, and you have to do a, a check for overall page speed before and after. Um, then is iterate. So like I mentioned, first <clears throat> you look for low-hanging fruits. You you measure, you, you fix, and then uh, you have to do it again. So, so we're actually going to keep going it again. And at some point, you have to know when is, when is fast enough for my hardware, for my site, for my client. Um, I don't know. It's a personal question. You have to, you have to almost keep the Chrome uh, network console open as you browse the web and notice what pages you think are slow and what pages you think are fast and, and keep in mind. The number that I have in my head is anywhere around 500 milliseconds for, for loading or less is reasonably good. Anywhere between 500 milliseconds and a, and a second is not ideal but tolerable and anything for back-end loading time Beyond a second, I always think, man, this site is slow. Why don't they have caching properly configured? Or what's, what else is going on? Um, yeah, and keep in mind also, once you do this iteration, you, uh, you want to have a notepad or, or some, an Excel sheet with, with a file so you can keep track of what you've changed. Maybe use Git branches, too. Uh, I couldn't come up with an A for Mafia, but M-A-F-I just wasn't catchy enough, so uh, A. Uh, all right. So. Um, so for the tools, so for front-end performance, uh, what we use is, at the start, we can start with Chrome Developer Tools, and there's a lot more, but I'm not covering that. But the most basic one, right, is, is this Network tab. You see what's going on. You see all the, all the little resources that my presentation has. They take almost no time because it's on local post, three milliseconds, because it's all static HTML. Um, and, uh, and there's other stuff inside of Chrome Developer Tools that I won't show, but it's really great. Get to know it well. We use it every day. Uh, for for, for more backend stuff, there's a tool called Apache Bench that lets you hit a web page 10 times or with a concurrency level of what you set, and it'll give you like a standard deviation. So it shows you not just one page, how long it took to render it, but if you hit it 10 times. Uh, another one that's for more complex scenarios is JMeter. It's also a command line tool. Uh, and uh, I don't know, this is ancient. I haven't used it in years. Anyone still uses JMeter? Is there a more modern version of it? I don't know. So, uh, but, but it's a Java tool where you can actually have a whole scenario, you have cookies and login and, and go to this page and go to that page, so on. Uh, and it gives you reports. And then uh, mo most, like the last couple of years, everyone's been using New Relic, which is a, a performance monitoring, like a combination server and application monitoring and performance analysis tool. That's, that's really great, it gives you nice reports. Uh, but it's not nearly as detailed to go into your actual code base and give you a call graph to show which of your functions and which of your contrib and custom modules are, are, are the culprit as a, a code profiler. So that's XHProf or Blackfire. Uh, XHProf is, uh, was, was a tool built by Facebook. It was open source. And Blackfire started off as a fork of that. But eventually, the creator of it uh, decided that he uh, changed so much. It wasn't a fork. It was, it was a new tool. Um, so the creator is uh, Fabien Portensier. He is also the crea creator of Symphony and Twig. Uh, so, and if I'm not mistaken, he came up with Blackfire when he was trying to speed up Symphony applications. Um, and um, it's it's not an open source tool, but it's got a free tier that's comparable or much better than uh, XHProf as a profiler. So whatever you were getting for free before, you're still getting for free. So it's kind of like the GitHub model where they give you a lot of stuff absolutely free. But once you start using it in your organization, they have little restrictions that will make you want to pay. Um, so, yeah, and, uh, and the way I discovered it personally uh, is, uh, is that every year or so, I would Google, whenever I need to like, have a slow site, I would Google XHProf better user interface. And I wouldn't have any hits, wouldn't have any hits. And about two and a half years ago, I was like, what's this? <laughs> and here we are. Um, it has really great docs. It's really simple to install, much, much, much clearer. Like they have really, because it's a commercial product, they went out of their way to give you copy and paste instructions for Mac, for Windows, for Ubuntu, for Red Hat, and so on. Uh, it, it, has, it has a lot of, uh, a lot of visualization and JavaScript built into the tool, as opposed to XHProf, which was like ugly tables. Um, so it's a much better UI, 
and also just a much better sort of developer experience. It's, it's somebody who sat there and iterated on a tool. Um, so for example, they have native built-in comparison profiles. So you, you run a profile, you change something, you run a second profile, and I'll show you a profile diff, which is really nice. Uh, and it has other things like that. It actually has support for PHP 7, which as of a year ago, PHP XHProf didn't. And uh, he points out that you can leave it on all the time in disabled mode, but you can have it installed in your server without slowing things down. Um, so, so that's the tool, and I'll do the demo as part of our first case study. Uh, so the first case study is this uh, McGill University listing of courses and programs. Um, so let's see, here's a page on my laptop uh, for, for McGill's site. This lists all their courses, all their programs and regulations for, for undergrads. It's got like, I don't know, 100,000 nodes. Uh, but here we're looking at a random node with 10 fields. Uh, it shouldn't be so complex. This shouldn't, and this is in fact a very light page. If I'm not mistaken, it took about 200 milliseconds to load with, with no page cache. So super light. Remember I said 500 and less is good. But we also know that all the students are gonna hit this page the moment registration opens on the same day. And so we're, we're also worried that maybe caching isn't enough. Um, so we wanted to make sure it's really tight. And just in general, we wanted to see if Blackfire can spot something. So we ran a, we ran a profile. So I think I'll show you how it works. There's one of the things you have to install is a command line thing. You'll install the Blackfire PHP probe and you'll have to restart Apache or PHP FPM. Um, another thing you'll have to install is the Blackfire agent, which is a little service that collects data from the probe and then sends it back to the Blackfire server, like the, the paid or free service. Uh, and then the third thing is a Blackfire command client. And it's actually three or four command line things you just copy and paste, like I said. And the last part of the stack is the little Blackfire Chrome extension. You guys see it here. This little black fire icon. Um, so yeah, you click, and it lets you compare it to previous references you made in the same environment. For now, I'll just click profile. You see what's going on? It says profiling 0, 10, 20, 40, 50, 60, 90%. What that just did is, uh, is it loaded this page with the profiler flags on to PHP, and that activates the Blackfire probe. It starts doing its instrumentation or profiling, collecting all the data, and sends that uh, over to the Blackfire server, it did it, it, did it 10 times. Uh, any guesses why it did it 10 times? Why it loaded the page 10 times? Okay, it's to cut. So like uh, sometimes like we have a cache turned off or maybe like uh, the site hasn't been hit for a while so it doesn't have the things loaded in its cache. So the first request, uh, request tends to be a bit slower but then the subsequent requests now that we have the cache built, so what happens is the page gets lo loaded from the cache and things are a bit faster. So uh, only one like one-time measure is always not sufficient to say whether a site is slow or maybe sometimes you open some site like LinkedIn. The first time it opens a bit slow, but that doesn't mean the site is bad or has performance issues. Maybe something went wrong and then you refresh and it loads like super fast. So. Yeah. It's something like exactly. that. So, so doing it 10 times, it can get like uh, figures for 10 different runs and then it can do an average and say like, this is the average time. So we get a better like figure to work with. Yeah, and, and personally, uh, that was my major pain point with XHProf. I would get a report, I would look at it, I would optimize it, I would, I would surely make an improvement, I would get a new XHProf report and it would be slower. How the hell is it slow? Well, because that very variability that always happens happened to be greater than my improvement. And I can't even tell what's what. So when, you, when you're dealing with averages, it's just as a developer, it's a lot more sane. So it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, another thing that you should notice is it lets you name your thing, such as Drupal North 2017. So here, I, when I made a profile of this page in, in the listing of profiles that I can access later, now it's named. Actually, Prof didn't really do that. Uh, it gives you this little toolbar, but typically you just click on view call graph. All right, so what do we see in this call graph? Uh, I know with the resolution it's really painful. Okay. Oh. Sure? Yeah, okay. All right. Like, uh, what we get here is like a list of function calls, like if we, how do you zoom out on a Mac? Here, <laughs> okay. So, how do I go down? Okay. So as we can see here, like this is the starting point, like uh, this is where we start serving the request. 
so it's main as we can see you and can then zoom in a bit more. then we go on like the tree like the function calls just from main we call some other function run in it then run in it calls many menu execute active handler you must have seen that name if you ever edited the index.php file of Drupal. So, and then the menu execute active handler calls a bunch of other functions, and that's how like we get a functional call tree for the entire request, like who calls whom and uh, how things work. Like for example, here we get other figures, uh, like Drupal alter, the alter method uh, f function has been called around 600 times for serving this particular request. And we can also see Drupal load has been called 110 times. And uh, for example, we click on one of them. We can see that the Drupal alter function in itself took around 16.4 milliseconds to do its thing. And uh, it like used so much of memory and uh, we can also see other information like 22 different functions called Drupal Alter. So we can, like, if you click on this big bar, it means the caller which called it the most number of times, we can see its name. Like, menu link translate is the one that called Drupal Alter around 22 times. And uh, similarly, we can also see the callees, like, what are the functions that Drupal Alter calls? So sometimes, like, a function is not slow, but a function is calling a function which is slow or taking too much of time. So, or maybe it's being called too many times. So we can click here and see the, that this particular function has been called 335 times from Drupal Alter. We can see like, the, like this one has been called twice and so on. Like the smaller ones are also there. And so this gives us like, we can see who's calling whom and we can figure out which, which function is the one which is taking the most amount of time. And similarly, we also have, uh, the, this is the time view. Like we, we are looking at uh, how much time which particular function is taking and everything is uh, like, uh, like uh, the time factor is highlighted here in this view. But we also have other views, for example, uh, we have a memory consumption of 24 megabytes. So if you want to know uh, which particular function is taking the most, like using the most memory, or uh, like uh, sometimes uh, instead of reading a file uh, using fopen or something, somebody has done a like uh, con uh, file get contents or something. So all of a sudden we have an entire huge file in the memory. So we can find it here. Like this particular function gets called and all of a sudden we have uh, a memory usage, so we can detect problems like that as well. And uh, what? I can drop it. Yep. Okay. Great. Yeah. So, so that's that's a good good start. I, I'd, I'd also add that at the top we have the global statistics here. Uh, so here it's show sorry guys. Here it's showing uh, that the whole request took 215 milliseconds. Out of that, the hard drive basically waiting was 30 milliseconds. Uh, 184 was mo mostly CPU running your code. Um, we already talked about 24 megabytes of memory usage for Drupal, that's quite low. I don't know if you've seen your Drupal profiles, but it's probably gonna be higher. Um, and there's no network services. Um, and there's a bunch of SQL queries that can show you what they are, how long they took. Um, so if, you know, you, if there's anything funky, you can, you can see. They're also they're also anonymized, so uh, it doesn't it captures the query, but it doesn't capture the the actual arg like the arguments to that query, like usernames and, and so on. Um, so the the next the next thing that's very exciting about this call graph, right? So like Jigar mentioned, this is the the call graph for your entire Drupal code base. Every function that Drupal has in it is here, uh, and when it calls another function, there's an error there. Um, you see some parts are pink. What that, what that is, is BlackRock calls it the hot path, or basically where the majority of your time is spent. So you can visually, when you're exploring this graph and clicking around, you can focus on the hot pink before the light pink, before the, the, just the gray. Um, so that, again, saves you a huge amount of time, and you can inspect the code visually. Um, in this particular case, uh, I also want to make a distinction between inclusive and, inclus inclusive and exclusive time. So, so, I don't know, let's find... Uh, a random function, like, 
like Drupal render. So, so Drupal render here spent uh, spent any time. Let's find something more pink, guys. I hope you're cool with that. Okay, node page view uh, spent uh, in total 79 or 80 milliseconds. That's the inclusive time. That means inclusive of this function from when it was started to be called to when it returned. Whereas the exclusive time is, well, how about the child functions, the functions that it called? Let's measure those, add them all up, and deduct that. So the exclusive time is always going to be less than the inclusive time. It's, it's, it's the time spent just in that function. If there's a for loop in there, or if there's an SQL query in there, rather than, uh, rather than uh, some child function. So, so this is what you have to analyze. And usually, if you're going to keep in mind the children, you're going to look at the exclusive time, if you're going to actually read the source code. But if you want to see just where is time being spent, it's the inclusive time. So you look at both, and Blackfire shows you both. Same thing with, um, with other things. Um, so here, it's, it's actually quite, quite hard to see in this resolution. But uh, if you wanted to, to say what's, what's slow here, and we click around, I can try to do it, but I might have to cheat, because I know. Um, it turns out that I noticed, this is after you know half hour of looking at it and trying to figure out, a surprising amount of time was being spent in Moriarty process page. That's Moriarty is the name of, of the theme that's running here. Uh, that's the Sherlock Holmes villain. And, and in fact, the Sherlock Holmes villain is turns out one of the villains in our Drupal site performance. Um, so 13% of the time is being spent in Mor Moriarty process page, and most of it is in Drupal get form, Drupal build form again 9% 9% study search box form. So I was thinking, what the heck is this study search box form, and why is it taking 10% of my request? And I go back. And uh, the, the site is called study. And, and I think, what is this, the search box form? And you can probably guess it's up here. And so, so it doesn't usually take 10% uh, you know, of your request to render a static, a static form. It's, what's not static about it? Well, apparently, this is a list of, a list of faculties. These, this is actually dynamically being pulled from a database of nodes. So maybe that's slow? I don't know. Let's, let's look at what Blackfire says. Um, so it says it spent pretty much all of that 9% in load academic faculty nodes, which calls node load 36 times. Um, so this is the Drupal 7 site, in case you guys are wondering. So, so this is with just about half hour of, of exploring the, the profile with Blackfire. I noticed that. And we actually went and opened in, in, in our editor load academic faculty nodes to see what the code does. Can, can you guys read this? There's a for each loop that just basically takes uh, takes all the faculty lists from somewhere and uh, calls node load on each faculty and then returns these loaded nodes in an array so that the form builder can render that little drop down. Um, first of all, we don't even need to load the whole nodes just to get the, the 10 titles, right? Uh, but second of all, is there any other even more direct optimization that could be, could be happen? Any Drupal 7 developers or Drupal 8? Yeah, no load multiple. Um, so here, all we had to do was convert it from, you know, instead of loading, loading the node in the array, not noting the load, but loading the node in the array, we do it outside of the array. We just accumulate the node IDs and call it node load multiple. And instead of running all of those queries 36 times, it runs all, all of those queries once. And right away, it saves us that 10%, or most of that 10%. Um, and in case you're wondering why, I, this, is, this is me, I was doing, I was doing this. Uh, I first wrote this in Drupal 6, like, I don't know, eight years ago, uh, where we didn't have node load multiple. And, uh, and then when I upgraded to Drupal 7, my algorithm was uh, upgrade to Drupal 7, refresh the site until, and fix errors until errors stop appearing, then call the client and say you're done. Uh, so that's how the site was in production without my node load multiple. But if I had spent just that extra hour with Blackfire, you know, the, the five years ago when I did the upgrade, it would have it would have caught it quite quite quickly. And it catches lots of stuff like this all the time. So this saves 25 milliseconds. It's not too much, but it was very very small to begin with, with 230 milliseconds. And uh, yeah. So for installation, like I said, okay, that was the case study. That was it. Uh, for for installing it, you have the little doc pages and they even tell you what to copy and paste. They even give you your tokens that are generated inside the doc pages so it's seamless. Um, yeah, so and what, what else does Blackfire do? I mentioned comparisons with baseline profile, I won't show it to you today. Uh, 
there's a, there's a scenario where you need to be able to trigger the same profile, not from the Chrome extension, but from the command line, because it's more complex than that. So for example, if you have Ajax requests, you know, you, you could say start recording Ajax request and then rerun it with profile, but, uh, but there's an alternative method for the command line or anything that has to do with uh, where, you, where you do post requests, for example. So that, that little button, start profiling, won't work. Um, so, so yeah, so the way you deal with that is there's a command line tool called Blackfire. It has a subcommand called run. And then you can run uh, various, various PHP code in it, including this drush command. Uh, in case you guys are wondering why you didn't say Blackfire run and then drush CCL, but drush launcher CCL, because drush is actually a, a bash script that, or even if it's a PHP script, it forks and gets another PHP instance, and that will confuse the, the profiler. So you've got to open the thing that it forks to. Um, another key feature of Blackfire is uh, being able to share profiles publicly. So unlike xhprof, which dumped it on your server and the, on your dev server and they're done, you can't throw it on Slack to your colleague. This one, you just put a link. So it's like, like GitHub. The post script is like Blackfire kernel. I sure. Yeah, so, so the next thing I, I, I wanted to show is for, for a different case study, this mysterious client that shall not be named. Uh, <laughs> they have a homepage that was really slow. How slow? Well, let's open up the Chrome's Inspector tab and, and see what's going on. Uh, in my Docker, so on my rather fast SSD laptop, the request to slash, which it, it fills in with the host name, or my, my case Docker, um, takes 400 milliseconds. And then we see it's actually a redirect, a 302. And then it redirects to the actual slash en, which is the real homepage, and that takes another 300 milliseconds. So on my really fast laptop, it takes 650 seconds. But uh, first of all, we, we notice right away, what the hell is this redirect, one. And two, we notice, why the hell is this redirect taking longer than the actual page request? Can you guys guess what the redirect must be doing? It's language detection. Yeah, it just sniffs a header in the browser. And so if you really want to be high performance, you'd probably like do this in Nginx, right? You, or whatever your, your, your setup is. You would check the header and then do the redirect in some C, C level like server that wouldn't even touch Drupal or PHP. But let's see why Drupal is so slow and Blackfire is our help. So if you want to uh, profile a request like this, uh, like this uh, redirect, so we select it this request. Oh yeah, because the moment you enter it in the thing, it will redirect to another URL. So you can't ask Blackfire by clicking that button as we saw. You can't ask it to run that first thing 10 times because it already redirected. You know, you'd be on the slash en. So instead, you select the first line in Chrome, you right click, and you select copy as curl. Has, has everyone done this? No? I'll show you with a, with a different screenshot. So in the network tab, here's the network. Take every request, you right click and you go copy as curl. Okay? And then if you open your thing and you paste it, look at what you get. You get curl, the URL that Chrome is going to open to, and then all the headers, including the cookie, the cache, everything that, that Chrome sent. So it really mirrors the request very accurately. Okay, so you did this. And then you prepend Blackfire in front of whatever you just copied, right? So, so the Blackfire command line client lets you say Blackfire, space, paste. And then you actually get a command that Blackfire will recognize. It'll run the exact same request, but now command line instead of in the browser extension. Um, so it'll give you the same little 10, 10 hits. And it'll give you a, a summary here and a, and a link to Blackfire.io with your profile that you can view. So just the same. And this will work for all your Ajax requests and all your post requests as well. Um, so here, once we open that profile, we're not gonna we're not gonna look at it now. But once we open that profile, uh, here's what we saw was in the hot path. Most most of the time was being spent in this function. Um, can you guys can you guys tell me what's what's wrong with this code, Drupal seven? Yeah, it's all the, so this is happening in, in, in the hook uh, pre-process page and, uh, and it does a redirect. So by the time hook pre-process page run, it already rendered the home page, which will never show. 
because the last line of Drupal go to is exit or die. Like it'll throw a header out and, and kill the request. Um, and it's already probably rendered some blocks. I'm not even sure, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it has already rendered blocks at that point. So you shouldn't put redirect code or access control or any of that kind of stuff in a pre-process hook. You should put it in hook init at the very early part of the bootstrap cycle. You do that, and now the redirect, instead of 350 seconds, took 74. Like I said, that's not great because you should move that into Nginx, but you know, with, with like a, a one-line change, you've already saved 90% of your redirect and 40% and of your homepage load time. So that's something. Um, so here's some more tips. Uh, I already talked about aggregation, but sometimes you need to disable it. Uh, because um, sometimes you actually care about that first time for some reason. So if, if you know what you're doing and you're willing to deal with more randomness, there's a little checkbox that lets you say run a profile but disable aggregation. Um, another thing that you need to consider is that when Blackfire shows you its, its graph, its call graph, it, uh, it doesn't it doesn't have, like node load is called with many arguments, right? Like, like a node ID perhaps, 36 times. It, it, it throws all of those things into one. So it merges all those calls with different arguments into one. Sometimes though, like some functions do variously different things depending on what the first argument is. The, the, the function theme comes to mind, you know? Theme page, theme block, all of these things are very different. Uh, one of them might be slow, one of them might be fast, and they're all running different code. So basically, sometimes you will want to tell Blackfire, I want you to, uh, treat a function name and for this function the first argument as effectively the function name to be used in the graph and it can do that. Yeah. Um, another thing is everybody here uses xdebug? Okay, well if you're in, uh, like a, a Drupal backend developer uh, you should be using xdebug, it, it's, it's, it saves you a lot of time, we use it with PHP Storm usually. And uh, the catch is, you do have to, every time you're gonna run a profile, you turn off xdebug, and every time you are xdebugging, like you just have to keep turning xdebug on and off. I would like them to fix it somehow, but we haven't figured out how to, how to do it. So we're restarting, uh, we're using the two tools to, together all the time, and we have to restart Apache or PHP PM quite a bit. Um, another thing is, it does introduce profiling overhead when you're running the profile. Remember, they, they were bragging that it doesn't introduce profiling when you don't click that button, but that means the, the request time is gonna be slower with Blackfire running. Uh, and it's not 10% slower, it could be 50% slower. This could be substantial. However, we find that despite the slowdown, it still gives you reasonable numbers. So it doesn't int introduce so much noise that it confuses you. So I mean, this is just a fact of profiling, but don't be confused when you see different things in your Chrome Inspector tab versus the Blackfire report. Um, another thing to keep in mind is uh, the memory versus time trade-off. Um, in computer science, it's a fundamental trade-off. If you ever study like algorithms 101, um, so you can always like add more caches and then you cache everything ever. You never expire those caches and, and, and maybe eventually you'll never have to recompute re anything again, but you just have to have a lot of RAM. Um, so Blackfire lets you keep track of both, but keep in mind that just by adding caches, that doesn't mean you've made your sysadmin's job better because all of a sudden he'll say, well, your server bill's gonna go up because we have to get a more expensive server with more RAM or we have to get more of them. Um, and another thing, okay, so that's that. And another thing is uh, the Blackfire SDK, which is like a PHP library. I believe it's actually by installing Blackfire Probe. There's a set of PHP functions you can just call that are magically there because Blackfire is PHP extension, the probe is there. And one of them is enable probe and one of them is disable probe. We use it all the time when we have a really thorny situation and we want to say, don't profile me all of Drupal. It's way too complex. I know the problem is somewhere between this line of code and that line of code everything it calls within it. So then you just, at the top of that line of code, you say enable probe, at the bottom you say disable probe, and then your profiles will magically only be filtered for that. If you use it, like we always do, uh, please make sure to, after you've made your fix, remember that methodology of mafia, you have to go back and actually uh, compare uh, the overall non-filtered profile to make sure you get better results. Because again, maybe you just pushed it down to another part of the page. Um, the last, uh, the last case study is for our own site when we upgraded to Drupal 8, uh, we, we love it, but why was it slower than our old block? Um, so we used Blockfire, and we actually noticed it wasn't slower because when it's cached, it's cached, but it's great. So the page cache, when it works, just as fast. But we noticed that when you edit any node, 
like pretty much all the caches seem to get expired, or most of them, and so our blog view became way slower. Um, and, and so we were wondering, how do we, how do we fix that? We edit nodes all the time, or maybe people do other things to change the things that invalidate its cache. So first of all, we had to write a, a Drupal 8 equivalent of a, of a little hook. I guess it's an event subscriber called this one. Uh, subscribes to the kernel event, kernel events request event, and it says call my little function called kill block cache. And that little function in turn calls uh, the Drupal cache tags invalidator service. So if you're a Drupal 8 developer, this will mean to, stuff to you. If you're, if you're coming from the Drupal 7 world, you'll be confused. But it's effectively, this is like a new way of writing hooks in Drupal 8, and it's hooking into the this particular hook name. There. And, uh, and this is the name of your hook implementation. And what it does is it calls an API call that says, please find me whatever thing is supposed to invalidate cache, cache tags and, and invalidate these two tags, the node list and the anything tagged with node 239, node ID 239. So this is a little snippet in Drupal 8 for disabling cache. So that when we do our little aggregation, we don't ever have the, those things cached. Uh, so then we run our profile, and in this profile we notice that 17% of our page load time, again for a static corporate site, which is showing blogs, like a blog listing, 17% was actually being spent in uh, something to do with blocks, and it said get visible blocks per region. Uh, and it was inside of Drupal 8 core. Our, our corporate site has very little contrib modules, almost no custom code. Um, so we looked at what's in it, and we noticed this code. Uh, we noticed that uh, it does uh, block storage, block properties, blah, blah, blah. And then for each block on your site, basically, it's a for loop, for each block on your site, it calls block access view. Can the current user view this block? So it's checking access control individually for each block. Well, our new Drupal 8 site is multilingual, and in Drupal 8, a lot more things are blocks than before, like titles and stuff. Um, and in multi, and the way we built it, not knowing better at the time, this is a couple of years ago, is we made a French block and an English block for all these little elements or fields. So we had a lot of blocks now, a lot more than before. We had like 150 now. So with 150 blocks, our, the same set as we had before became, from, from this code's perspective, a lot more complex with a lot more access control to check. Um, this is a similar challenge that we always had since the Drupal 5 or Drupal 6 days in the node access system. When you want to have a, a menu rendered with a bunch of nodes in it, Drupal wants to be able to hide all the little menu items that aren't accessible. Well, it'll have to call node access for each, each of the 100 items in your menu. And, uh, and so in Drupal 6, they came up with a, a node grants uh, scheme. Are you guys familiar with this? Like hook, what is it, hook node grants and hook access. Hook node grants. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hook node access. So yeah, so, so we realized that the exact same scheme can work for blocks, and uh, so far we have as a contrib module, uh, like an implementation that just hooks into your site and uh, implements it. We, we applied this little contrib module on our site. Uh, it took a day and a half. This is, this is definitely not in the trivial category fix, but uh, it's, we, so we applied it and it saved 80, 80 milliseconds uh, from, from the page request time, which was quite substantial. I believe we had 117 milliseconds in that function, and now it's minus 80, so I guess there's 30 left. So it's a pretty, pretty good thing to save. Uh, this is a little screenshot of that diff profile that you guys heard me mention. Um, so, so that's a little other motivation for using a tool like a profiler and why Blackfire is a nice one. Uh, we want to point out that what you've seen so far is all free, um, but once you get in, you start paying them, like, I don't know, $15 a month or something, you're, you're at the profiler plan. I don't know how much it is, it could be more, but not too much. Uh, and you get more data retention than a couple of days, and you get to use recommendations, which Jigar will talk about. At the premium plan, you get to have multiple team members, you get to have custom metrics, so you get to say, measure this particular thing, and you can integrate Blackfire runs and these metrics with your CI system and it can have like Slack integration and if you pay them enough money they'll even let you run your own hosted version because you're running for a large government or organization that'll never send their code profiles to a, a third party service that you guys aren't using Get GitHub at all. So that's, that's kind of where they are. So Jigger? Uh, okay. Okay. So the thing is like, uh, like Alex mentioned, sometimes we want to uh, uh, 
Has anybody used BHAT tests? Okay, so what happens there is like you write a tiny little file with a bunch of tests, and every time you make a commit and make a push, uh, so like all the tests get executed and your code gets validated, and if your tests are all good, and you get a green icon saying everything is good. So that happens per commit. So like what usually uh, what we're as developers used to doing is uh, before launch, we test a site and we say like everything is looking good. If this is not looking good, then we'll make some changes, use Blackfire, fix it, and that's it. We launch the site. Now, if we build some new module after, like, uh, say, the site launches and then you have some new requirements, you want to write some new code. So what happens is, like, uh, for those like, small development cycles, we usually do not tend to use uh, tools like Blackfire and stuff to uh, evaluate the scenario. Like, I made a module, and now how did it affect my performance? At launch, the site was working good, but what happened after the new module? So. Uh, if uh, there is Blackfire offers some mechanism, like you can write a YAML file with a bunch of tests, and every time you make a commit and you make a push, you can like pr program things such that uh, those tests get executed automatically, and you get to know like uh, the change in performance. So, say somebody makes a commit and pushes it, and you see that suddenly the site has become slow, like. It will give you raise a red flag saying things changed in the Blackfire evaluation. So yeah, that way we, we get to know like per commit uh, what what performance hits like uh, performance changes that uh, the new code is bringing. So to do this we don't have to do anything big. What we have to do is we have to have a dot Blackfire dot YAML file. Uh, and we get to like write some tests there. Like for example, uh, this the things that you're seeing here are tests which get uh, Drupal 8 integration with Blackfire, which executes uh, the these following tests and lets lets you know like gives you suggestions, recommendations, stating for example you should execute less SQL queries. So say you are executing more than a certain number of queries, you get this message then you should enable APC U cache like uh, for Drupal 8. So you can specify rules of your own and we will take a look at it here. Like by the way, we wrote these Drupal 8 uh, integrations for Blackfire and there will be some for Bla uh, Drupal 7 soon as well. So like I said, like we have a .blackfire.yaml file in the root of our project and I am sharing this example of, uh, first we detect the metrics. For uh, big frameworks like Drupal 8 and Drupal 7 as well, and Symfony, and you uh, already get some metrics which you can use in your tests, but you can define your own custom metrics like uh, here, what I'm doing actually is matching any calls which are made by this particular function to this particular function, and every time this condition is satisfied, this particular metric will uh, have like increment. So you would get to know whether the session is uh, like uh, whether somebody is logged in or somebody is not logged in. And if it's an anonymous session, then we will have plus one or something more than that in this metric. And similarly, we are doing the same thing for detecting whether we are loading a, a Drupal page from cache or if you're loading it, like we're building it over again uh, instead of using page cache. So we define these two metrics uh, if like, you want to define custom metrics. And then we use those metrics in our tests like this by writing a test section in your blackfire.yaml file. And as you can see, when this condition is satisfied, like if Drupal 7 is installed, and if it's an anonymous user request, then we check whether this condition is satisfied as well. So if uh, the page is being built from cache, then everything is fine. But if it's not being built from cache, like we page cache is turned off, then we get to see this particular message. 
So we can do a bunch of cool things like if somebody forgets to turn on page cache after doing some dev stuff and makes a commit, a commit with the page cache turned off with the config system in Drupal 8, then we'll immediately get a red flag like page cache is turned off, we get a message and we get a chance to like correct it before someone else finds the error. So we can do things like this uh, with the blackfire.yaml file, right? Yeah, and uh, so my colleague Dave and, and later Jigar worked on creating all these metrics and assertions and we submitted them back to Blackfire who has, like, encouraged us to do this. And so now the built-in Blackfire tool has this recommendation section which is just running these assertions that we list here. And if you just open Blackfire on your site, it'll run through this checklist. And we, for the previous, in previous projects, we have actually said, we don't know why this site is slow. And then we're like, wait, Blackfire says, there's a recommendation we should look at. And, uh, and sure enough, when it was the recommendation that we've written like half a year ago, and it helped us. So, so checklists are great, and checklists built into your tool are even better. So uh, check them out, and, you can, and, and at a certain level, you're, you're allowed to write your own assertions and metrics. And they're as, as simple as this. Um, yeah, so, so that's about it. So we have some blog posts here. You, you don't have time to cover them on the slides. Follow, follow me, my colleague Dave, and sorry, we, we forgot to update the slide, but, and also, uh, I am Jigarius, by the way. Jigarius. Jigarius, like this. So, Jigarius, he's in. Yeah. Um, so, follow us on Twitter, read these blog, blog posts with more details on some of these case studies. Um, I've also been asked by our corporate propaganda department to point out that we're doing uh, lots of upcoming online trainings. So, we do some site building and intro stuff. Uh, but we also are doing developer training as well. Uh, nothing covers Blackfire specifically, but if you have interest, we can, we can actually come up with a day-long course. So let us know if your organization needs it. Um, and there's, an, there's a week-long five-day training in Ottawa, September 11th to 15th, so tell your colleagues. Uh, and check out Evolving BCH last training. Um, and the last thing is, uh, if you guys sat through this, this presentation, we were very grateful. Uh, and so uh, the, the good folks uh, at Blackfire were happy that we're giving this talk and they sent us a few books to, to hand out. So if you guys are interested in grabbing this book, it was, it was written by the creator of Blackfire and Symphony, and uh, like I mentioned, it's as much an art as, and a science, and these are only a few case studies, and he actually goes into a lot more details, and, and he's as good writer of prose as he is of code. I'll, I'll, I'm shocked to share. So this is a really great book, and that's what inspired me to, to write this presentation, so grab it if you'd like. Thanks a lot. We don't, we don't have time for questions. I think you have, you have your break, but we'll be here. So come, come up and ask us. Thanks.